the format of being robot. I was looking around on the internet trying to find games to play. When I discovered a game called Roblox, at first, I thought it was a stupid game that was popular because of all the YouTube videos of people playing the game. But looking at how many people downloaded it, I thought that I would try it out. But once I installed it, I realized that I had to make an account to play. At the time I was a little kid, and I had trust issues, so I uninstalled it thinking it was a scam. But when I was 10 years old, my school friend kept wanting me to install the game again and play it with him. After three weeks of him begging me to make an account, I lost it. I installed the game once again. But I was still worried that I would get hacked. I went to my mother. She said it was fine to make an account. Because everything needed an account to do things. She said she had made an account on Twitter to be able to work. I got my trust back and made an account. My mom bought me some Robux. From that day I loved Roblox. At school the next week I asked my friend what his username was. He happily obliged and told his username. After school I sent him a friend request, he accepted it and I played with him for a long time. Sadly, it was his last day the next week. Due to his dad being in the army, he had to move. Luckily, I still had him as a friend on Roblox but he's not too active. One day I was playing the game, Roleplay World Classic. When I met two players, they were nice and they roleplayed with me. I wanted to play with them some more on a different game so I became friends with them. And that they onward they were my best friends on Roblox. Now the present day. I am pretty good at Roblox. I have more Robux than ever. I have more friends than when I was 10. It's a paradise. The thing I hate about Roblox is that it's very toxic. Toxic players like Senders and some C and PS are the ones I hate the most. Sometimes people even quit Roblox because of how toxic it is. Luckily, I don't get bullied a lot. Recently, something happened that changed my mind a lot about how bullying can hurt a user or a person mentally. Sometime around a week ago I logged into Roblox to play with my friends. When my second best friend, who I'll call John, said that he had received a message from a user. I asked who it was. He said the user's name was, Fixie13342. John said that the message's content was his or her saying to join his own place. I thought it was a player who wanted friends. So I asked if we could all join together. No. John said. We've already joined his place. And it's not what you think. Just don't join it. We played for a little more before my friends had to go so I said goodbye and left. I logged off of Roblox wanting to check my Discord server. In my head I was curious. What could be in his place? Curiosity killed the cat, as I opened the Roblox tag once again. I typed in the player's username. His avatar looked like a fox. He had the fluffy fox ears hat. He had a fox shirt. But his legs were black with no pants. I refreshed the screen. The user was online. Then Fixie13342 joined his place. I then joined the place. Wondering if I could be friends with the furry or fox user. I spawned on a concrete type walkway which led to a little blue house. Next to the wall was a car, that was parked at the right side of the house. I noticed that the windows were not anchored. I walked inside the doors. I jumped on the left window. I must have triggered something because a note appeared on my screen. Hi. I am Love Foxes. In fact, I am a fox. But people say suck because I furry. I'm not furry, I fox. Yeah, the grammar on the note was bad. The house was pretty empty. There was only a bed with two couches with three boxes in between them. I walked on one of the boxes. Another note appeared on my screen. They know where I live, I get scared that they will hurt me fox pet. But mommy says that everything will be fine. The grammar was also bad. I walked behind the second couch. I clicked on it. And I received a tool named Q1. I walked towards the back door. I used the tool to open it. In the backyard was a fox in a dog house. There was a fence that surrounded the small backyard. I walked on the dog house trying to see if something was there. A note appeared again. I love my pet fox. But the local kids throw rocks at it. They say it is scary. But it likes me. I looked around the backyard to see if I could find a key. I clicked everywhere. Clicked on the right side corner of the fence. It gave me another tool which had the name, Key 2. I walked out the door. I used it on a door that was on the left side of the house. 
It worked. The room had a hole in the floor that led down to the basement. When I got down there, I triggered once again another note. I have had enough, is what the note said. The basement was covered in boxes and trash. I tried to look for key 3. It took even longer. Finally, I clicked on the back of a broken chair that was sitting on top of a big box. It finally gave me the third key. I went to the big metal door. I used the key again. And what I saw behind that door really messed me up. What I saw was Pixie 13,332 standing in the corner of the small room. He had no face. And he was pointing to a dead body, with two decapitated legs. When I stepped inside the room I was immediately kicked from the game. The reason, foxes will rise. To this day I still don't know what this account wanted to do, or the foxes will rise phrase meant. May 1st, 2022. Well I got to say that, it's been a long time since I posted about this, but yeah, more messed up shit has happened after I joined his or her's place. I don't think I can forgive myself for joining that insane user's place and interacting with him. I will just call the user a he for now. So basically, after leaving Fixie's place, I ended up getting a message from his account, saying, Hello, my username. I want to see your skills. Please friend me. And after seeing that grammar waste message, I immediately went to the friend request page, to find his account sitting right there in the request page. Unfortunately, I accepted his friend request, trying to see if I could make the user go away from me once and for all. Right when I friended Fixie, the first thing he did was to message me in my chat box. And when I checked my chat box, I found this message from the user. Hello once again, my username. Can we have some fun? No, I can't, I really can't. I replied back. Well, you should join me. He responded. After he said those few words, he started messaging me a lot of messed up questions. I can't really show you them, but basically he was typing things that seemed like he was asking me out, and I was typing back to him, trying to make him go away, or just at least trying to stop the user from saying those words. But Fixie did not go away, he kept messaging on and on and on, until I gave up trying, and told him that I would join his game, just to shut him up. He ended up replying with OK, and Fixie joined his game, the one I had joined earlier, I soon followed after. That might have been the worst mistake I did, while interacting with this crazy Roblox user. When I joined the game and finished loading, Fixie 13332 teleported me to the bed that was inside the house, I thought he was using admin commands, so I was not alarmed. That wasn't until he said something in chat, that really concerned me, get in it, was the only single thing he said. Almost instantly I held on to the shift key and ran out of the house. I thought I was safe after I ran to the other side of the map, but not for long. Because soon after, the sky turned to night, and Fixie 13332 ran at me with a shield and a sword in his hands. I tried to dodge Fixie's attacks, but I was too slow because he sliced me with the sword. Which a little cutscene played, where it showed a perspective of me, as I was thrown into a coffin by Fixie, and a lot of screaming was heard, as my character died. And after that, I was once again picked from the game, this time for no reason. And after all of that happened, well, I ended up going offline after that, just because I did not want to deal with the user, and I also thought that he would forget about me. Sadly, I was wrong. The next day when I came back to Roblox, once again started to ask me strange questions, and even forced me to join his game a couple of times. After that, I decided to unfriend Fixie, and move on with my life, which was not the best idea. Since I made the story, I started to see the user gaining popularity. Like his game got tons of visits, and many people followed the account. And it wasn't until recently that I noticed that there were YouTube videos, of people narrating my story. Which I found dumb, since the story I made was kind of stupid, depending on how you see it. But I didn't really care, at least people were starting to hear about my story. But still, that does not compare to what happened very recently, like about one day ago.
On that day, I was having a normal time playing some Roblox, until I realized that I had once again gotten a friend request from, you know what, and being the hyper person I am, I friended the user again, to see if I could shut him up a second time, and see what will happen. Well, what I got was pretty messed up and weird to say, and I'll list them here. Fixie13332 himself, told me to join his game, and then started bullying me and typing like a crazy person, with a bunch of people that I had realized that they were his minions, which were people that followed or sent a friend request to him, and got unfriended, and were graded as minions after he said to head first off, tried to make them suffer. And he also attacked them at random times, eventually leading the chaos to madness, as they made the decision to raid some of my friends' games, and also at one point tried to make me part of the raid. Like wow, I thought he was a victim of bullying, but it seems more like he has lost his mind, because of the amount of bullying he has most likely received. Sadly, I was not able to take any screenshots of these occurrences, because I somehow forgot to take any of them. So most likely I won't be able to show evidence of what happened then and now, but at least for the first of many times, I can be able to tell you guys the events that have happened, because I don't think you want to miss them, do you? May 19, 2022. So yeah, a lot more has happened since the last time I updated the article, like a lot. So much that I could not explain really much, because I don't really remember much, and I also forgot to take screenshots for the other encounters with Fixie13332. So I'm pretty much out of luck, but I did experience another encounter, with this user in particular. Which happened recently, that I did get screenshots, and I have more information about it. And it also have occurred about 8 or so minutes ago, while I'm writing this story. So I'll just talk about it for now, since I don't remember the other occurrences. Which I'll explain right now. So basically when it happened, I was bored at the time, and I was thinking of ideas of what to do, when suddenly I remembered about Fixie13332. At first, I did not want to have to do anything with the user, but I got an idea. Which was to send a friend request, and try to be friends with the user. Which was a stupid idea, since I have kind of tried already. And I failed, but I didn't think much about that decision, and I sent him a friend request, and waited. I didn't have to wait long, because right after I refreshed the Roblox tab on the user's profile page, it showed that he was online. And seconds later, the friend request was accepted. Wow. I said out loud. Does this user has an alt account or something? It's like he knows what I'm doing. After he friended me, I said quickly in the chat. Hello Fixie. And he replied back with. Hello Foxy. That message made me cringe a little, as I witnessed it. I soon replied back. How's it going? Good. Fixie said back. At that point he had asked me to join his place, and I ended up joining it, thinking I could finally make friends with the mysterious user. When I finally loaded, he started to walk me around the house again, as I walked to the door, I noticed there was a tree with a figure, standing next to it. Unfortunately, I was to be focused on Fixie to even go see what it was. Fixie then unlocked the back door, leading out to the backyard, where I was meet with a rather warming surprise. The backyard was the same, but there were two new Fox NPCs, that had big smiley faces, with pink cheeks, and also, for some strange reason, had pretty uncanny looking eyes, which were black with white pupils. Oh, what cute Fox NPCs! I said in the chat. Thanks. Fixie13332 replied in response. Fixie then asked me to go down to the basement, which I was sure, it would be fine. But I was wrong, he found the key for the basement door, and I saw the blood and the bodies, flash quickly, as he opened and closed the door repeatedly, it wasn't until he typed in the chat. I'ma just break down the door, so you can see it clearly. When he stopped, and pulled out those damn building tools, using admin commands, he deleted the door, from the map. And I saw there were two more bodies lying in the room. I ended up asking him why he was offing people, but he just said. It's my bullies. He repeated it about three times, before he said something out of the ordinary. Let's play. And suddenly, 
He pulled out the same rusty sword and shield, and ran at me. I managed to run up the stairs, where I then took a screenshot, as he stands at the stairs for a few seconds, staring at me. As I was done saving the screenshot, he suddenly, ran up the stairs, and sliced me with the sword. And the same exact cutscene of me getting thrown into a flipping casket, as a loud scream was heard. After I teleported back to spawn, I ended up hiding in his car, which I noticed that it had changed to an orange color, and I waited. And after a while, a person joined. I wish I would just go find his username, so I could use it in this pasta, but I'll just say his name was, Bloodthirsty. He joined, and he started saying hello to me, I then said I was hiding from Fixie, which he said he was his friend, who I didn't really care. His avatar was a robot type furry. I'm sorry if I forgot the furry type, I'm stupid, I guess. Furthermore, he had unanchored the car, causing it to fall apart. And if anything could get worse, more of his friends joined, and started messing around, while Fixie just stood away from keyboard. After a while, he finally typed something in the chat. Ellipses was what it said. As the message appeared in the chat box, someone had restored the map. And to end that all, the game crashed. And I decided to go offline and write this experience down, for you guys to see. Which is all I have got from this user today. Right now, nothing has happened. I'll try to update this article if anything else happens. So, I guess I'll have to end this update for now, I'll see you later. July 8, 2022. On the 16th of June 2022, I made the decision to talk to Fixie13332, to see if I could get any answers, about why he acts the way he does. I joined his game, and I waited, playing around in the game to pass the time. Finally, he joined after about 6 minutes of waiting. After a few seconds, he chatted hello in the chat. Hi Fixie. I chatted back. Do you want to talk? I said once more. Yes. Fixie replied back. I then asked him if he had a Discord account, and for some reason he said yes. I gave him my Discord number, and I friended him. Soon after, we started talking with each other, asking questions and other things. We were mostly talking about Roblox-related things, mostly about Roblox crashing and other controversies. It wasn't until I asked, Why do you act the way you do? This is when things started to get strange. Well, it's a very long and sad story. Fixie said. After the message popped up, he started talking about what happened in his life. And I got to say, what he was talking about, really caught me off guard. Fixie began his speech. I was born on December 9, 2006, and I didn't live very long. I was born with no hair, and I couldn't speak until I was three. My parents were very bad people. They treated me with dissatisfactory, but they treated my brother like he was God. My parents forced me to hang out with the kids next door, and I know they are killers. They had all kinds of weapons and other things, and they even did bad things to me. I had gotten bullied a lot, and eventually, I snapped. I killed one of the bullies, and I then threatened my parents. Eventually, I killed and tortured everyone I knew, but my brother. His avatar turned around while he continued speaking. Before I died, I said one last word. What did you say? I chatted back. Foxes. Will. Rise. Fixie replied. I was completely shocked about what he had said. Sadly, I was forced to stay inside my body, because God rejected me, so I won't go to heaven or hell, or so I thought. I ended up killing the rest of my bullies, during the time I was still attached to my body. It wasn't until I was six, when I realized that I would be on Earth forever. What happened to your brother? I replied back. Well, my brother died. Fixie chatted me back. He died when I was five, and he became the same as me. I then asked Fixie another question. Why do you love foxes so much? Fixie continued speaking. Well, it's because I was saved by one. My dad threw me off a bridge. I was going to drown, when a fox suddenly came out of nowhere, and swam towards me. The fox grabbed me and dragged me back on the other side of the river, and that's why I love foxes so much. After he sent the message, he sent me a file download link. 
it was a zip file, and its title was, S.A. Carrot V.E.7.A.L. Asterisk L. Save all. The title was pretty off-putting, but I didn't care, I just wanted to get to the bottom of this strange user. I clicked on the download button, and the file started downloading onto my computer. Soon after it finished downloading, I extracted the file. And as I predicted, a folder popped up on my desktop. I opened the folder, and soon after, I got surprised. In the folder was a bunch of mp4 files and other folders. I decided to choose the first file in the folder, which went by the name, m caret y caret asterisk s t o r y my story dot mp4. The video started out with a slideshow of pictures, supposedly drawn in Microsoft Paint. I noticed that the drawings were themed around Fixie's life, with the usual stickman people that a normal kid would draw. A song, what I know was the Molda, was also playing in the background. The first picture was Fixie's family, which seemed normal. The picture had four characters, Fixie, his brother, his mom, and his dad. For some reason, his mom and dad were drawn like normal humans, while Fixie and his brother on the other hand were drawn in an orange color, with two triangles on the top of their heads, supposed to be ears. The picture played for three seconds, before cutting to another picture. The second picture showed Fixie. He was sitting on the ground, on a sidewalk, as two stickman kids were pointing and laughing at him. For a while, the video showed portraits of Fixie's life. The third picture was Fixie getting locked in a closet by his father, as his brother watched on in horror. The fourth picture was Fixie getting the head of his fox plush ripped off by another kid. And the fifth picture after that, was Fixie 13,332 standing next to his mother, crying, while holding the fox plush. There were two speech bubbles, coming from the mom and Fixie. Mommy, my fox toy! Said Fixie. Not now son! Said Fixie's mother. The sixth picture shocked me. It was Fixie's dad in the garage, taking a sniper rifle off a shelf. The garage door was cracked open, and Fixie was peeking out from behind the door. The image stayed on the screen for about five seconds, before the screen cuts to black, and the music stops. For after about four seconds, it cuts back to a new scene. Unfortunately, I was not expecting what was to come next. The seventh new picture showed Fixie in a room, holding a pistol, with the dead body of a kid laying on the floor, with a bullet hole through his head. The music started up again, but this time it was different. The song had jumped to the one minute and eight second mark, which is where the music got intense. The eighth picture showed Fixie, pointing the gun at his parents. Seconds later, a ninth picture popped up, which showed his parents lying on the floor, covered in blood. Then suddenly, the scene jumped to the last tenth picture of what it's supposed to be Fixie's house, burning to the ground. As the image popped up, the music cut off, as a loud beeping sound played. After about four seconds, it cut to black. A couple of seconds later, red text appeared on the screen, and it read. You don't know what I have been through. It stayed on the screen for 10 seconds, before the video finally ended. I ended up trying to open the other video files, but they wouldn't even open. I ended up looking in the other folders, but there was nothing in them. I ended up going back to Discord, to talk back to Fixie, when I realized he went offline. Ever since that day, Fixie has been online more and more, and I'm starting to feel like he's trying to make the most of his existence. But still, there are still unanswered questions. How was he able to hold a gun, people might ask. Well my friends, I don't think I'll be able to figure that one out, no matter how hard I try. Furthermore, if you decided to be friends with Fixie 13332, always make sure you and your friends treat him well, or else he's going to go mad. And also, if you see someone bullying him, please try your best to stop that person from bullying Fixie, because I bet Fixie will be so proud of you. And if you can't stop the person from bullying Fixie, then you have to do what you have to do. Find where the bully lives, get a gun, or a knife. Go to the bully's house and give them what they deserve. I would not kill anyone, but I'm sure, some insane person would kill a bully. I might not investigate Fixie 13,332 anymore, but always remember, if you do anything to stop bullying, Fixie 13,332 will be proud of you.